Hey guys, the second half of the week this week is, well, the second half, it's going to be Tuesday, th Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to be looking at three different types of momentum. We talked about force yesterday, which is mass times acceleration. And momentum has to do with a type of force, but it's the continued movement based on mass and speed. Now, the formula for momentum is really simple. Momentum's formula looks like this. Momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So this weird P thing, that's momentum. So depending on how heavy something is and depending on how fast it's going, that object has more momentum. Now you might, you might think of momentum like rolling a rock down the hill. If your mass is really, really high, and your velocity is really small, you can still have lots of momentum. Think about trying to stop a boulder as it's slowly mo rolling down a hill or a bus. Also, you could have a very tiny mass, but a huge velocity. So think of a bullet. Unless you are bulletproof, it's very tough to stop a bullet, even though it doesn't weigh very much because it's traveling so quickly. Okay. So we're going to be using this formula in, in a really exciting part of Science 20 Physics called Conservation of Momentum. And what we're looking at specifically is collisions. So when stuff smashes into other stuff or bounces off other stuff or even explosions, which is really exciting. So just today, today's lesson alone has to do with collisions. Okay, and we're going to be using a similar formula where how much momentum something has before, it's a very confusing, this, this means sum, so all of the momentum something has before has to be equal to all of the momentum that happens after. In your data booklet on page two, there's a special box in the top right hand corner called collisions. And today, we are going to be looking at hit and stick collisions. They're the easiest to do math on. So we're going to be looking at hit and stick collisions. And the formula looks like this. You have two, and we're only dealing with two objects. You have two objects. Object one, that's what the little one means. It has a mass, and it's moving or not. And we're going to add that to movement of the second object, how its mass and its velocity. And hit and stick means those two things smash together. So what happens is you have to then on the other side of the equation, add their masses together to get a velocity that's happening of the first and second system. Okay, so what does a hit and stick collision look like? Well, a good example is something like this. You've probably seen this before. Mm -hmm. And play. It does not want to play. Play. There we go. That's a hit and stick. Oh, here comes. <laughs> Don't get out of your car. You're safer in your car than slide. Oh, God, look out. Ah. <laughs> no. Oh, those poor people. Okay. So I better, uh, I'm just going to stop, stop that. So, okay. So that's a hit and stick collision where you have one object and it's moving and it hits another object and then now those two objects are together and they're moving. Okay, that's a hit and stick collision. In real life, when there are collisions, just say if something like vehicles, we're going to use vehicles as, as an example, you can actually figure out how fast things are going if you have the total mass of the vehicles which is really cool from a, like a, a forensics point of view. Okay, we're going to do two problems. All right, first problem. 
You have a 10,000 kilogram gram train traveling west and it's moving and it smashes into a car that's not moving. After the collisions, the trains and the car stick together. This is not the trains, the train and car stick together. What is the new velocity of the smashed up train cars? Okay. So the, this, the formula we're going to use, we'll write it down. So the hit and stick formula looks like this. Okay. That's our formula. Okay, let's write down stuff in our toolbox. So the mass of the first thing is 10,000 kilograms, and its velocity is 1.5 meters per second. The mass of the second train car is 20,000 kilograms, and its velocity is to start with nothing. Okay, so one of the things that we can get rid of is this expression right, this part of the formula right here. That's going to go to zero because the velocity of the second train car is zero. So it's not moving, so anything times that is zero. So we can change this now to m1v1 is equal to m1 plus m2 v1 plus v2. Okay. All right, let's put our numbers in there and then we'll, we'll figure out what's going on. So mass of the first car is 10,000 kilograms, okay? The speed of the first car, velocity of the first car is 1.5 meters per second, okay? Now, mass one plus mass two, 10,000 plus 20,000, I'm gonna say that's 30,000 kilograms, all right? And we have V1 and V2, okay? So let's do just a little bit more math. 10,000 times 1.5, got to put that in the calculator, is, actually I didn't, I could have done that in my head, 15,000 is equal to 30,000 times V1, V2. So we're going to divide this side by 30,000, and what we do to one side, we do to the other. We divide this side by 30,000. And we get the speed of the second system, V1, V2, is equal to 15,000 15, divided by 30,000. I get 0.5 meters per second. So train car is moving. It hits a second train car, which is not moving. Okay, The two train cars smash up and move together. All of this momentum, and this doesn't have any because it's not moving, is transferred to the new system that's a lot heavier. And we can see it's not moving as quickly. Okay. Now you could have done this a little differently. You could have rearranged this from the start and then put your numbers in. So when you got to this point right here, you could have said, all oh, right, all right, I have to get solve velocity. So I'm gonna divide this side by M1, M2 and divide this side by M1 plus M2. And then, and then you could have put your numbers in. So that's another way to do it. Okay. Let's take a look at this hit and stick. All right. So we got a piece of red, red Play-Doh. It's rolling down a hill and it smashes into another piece of blue Play-Doh that's moving very slowly. So now we have two systems that are moving. The two garble into one big piece of Play-Doh. Okay. All right. So this is a hit and stick. They've stuck together. And our formula is whoop, M1. V1, that's momentum of the red, so we'll, we'll say that's red, okay, and we're going to add that to M2V2, that's the blue, is equal to mass 1 plus mass 2, V1, V2, okay, all right, let's write down what we know, M1, the red Play-Doh, red Play-Doh weighs 0.2 kilograms, Perfect. The speed of the red Play-Doh, 5.66 meters per second. Okay. Blue, blue Play-Doh weighs 0.4 kilograms, so quite a bit heavier, well double, and it's moving 1.2 meters per second. Okay. How fast are the two pieces of Play-Doh moving after the crash? 
So we are solving for V1 and 2. So let's just rearrange this formula. Let's divide both sides by M1 and M2. They're gone. They put, that comes over here. M1, M2. Okay. It looks a little confusing, but it's not too bad because we made our toolbox. We have the mass of the first system. Okay. Right. The, this this thing. Right. Mass of the first system is 0.2. We're going to times that by the speed of the first system, 5.6. Okay. We're going to add that to mass of the second system. 0.4 times velocity of the second system, 1.2. And then we're going to divide that by the mass of first and second system put together. So I'm just going to do that and say that's 0.6. Okay. So just double check. Do we have the mass of the first system? Yep. Do we have the speed of the first system? Yep. Mass of the second system, speed of the second system, and then we've added both of the masses together to get 0.6. Now, because we have a plus sign, I would put brackets around the two multiplications. Um, and then I would, you know, unless you're really good with your calculator, I would do this in, a, in two steps just to make sure I don't make a mistake. mistake. I would go 0.2 times 5.6, and I would write that down. Okay, So I get 1.12, and I'm going to add that to 0.4 times 1.2, and that's 0.48. That's over 0.6. So you can see what I did is I did this part here, and I did this part and wrote it down. Okay. Then I'm going to add those two together, 1.12 plus 0.48. Okay. That gives me 1.6 over 0.6. Okay. Now, you don't have to do all these extra steps, but it's very careful. You have to be very careful that if you put this in a line. So if I just put this into my calculator, if I go 0.2 times 5.6 plus 0.4 times 1.2, my calculator does give me 1.6, but some of your calculators, if they're not a graphing or a scientific one, may not. Okay, divide that by 0.6, and I get my answer: 2.666 repeating. So we need to have this to two sig figs because the least accurate value is the speed, two digits. So I'm going to go 2.7. And what am I solving for? I'm solving for how fast they are moving, how fast are the two pieces moving, and that's meters per second. That's meters per second. Okay. So that's today's lesson. And you guys are going to be starting to work on a, uh, an assignment that's going to be due by the end of the week. And that assignment is going to have now some questions on force and some questions on momentum and the three different types of collisions that we're working on. Today's lesson was just hit and stick. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at hit and rebound, and the next day, we're going to be looking at explosions. So we're going to take this one at a time, and you can pick away at the assignment that's going to be due one floop by the end of the week. Thanks, guys.